Hi, I'm Mark Bradshaw. I'm Nathan McLaughlin. I'm Will Chan, and we're physical education specialists at Woodhaven Middle School, and we're here to share with you some basketball activities. The first basketball game we're going to show you is called Dribble Tag. This game can be played from students in grades 3 and up, and it can be between 10 all the way to, uh, we've had up to 80 kids play the game. In order to play Dribble Tag, you need one basketball per player. So if you have a large group, you're going to have to have a lot of basketballs. If you have a smaller group, you can get away having a small amount of basketballs. So in Dribble Tag, uh, everybody has a basketball. You can go anywhere in the gym. Okay, there's no restrictions for space. The objective, like I said, keep your dribble alive. If somebody tags you, you sit down where you got tagged. How do you get back in the game when you've been tagged? When the person who tagged you is tagged by somebody else, or if we yell jailbreak or resurrection. Okay, so for example, Austin, can you stand up? Alex, can you stand up? So say these two guys are in the game. Uh, Alex, Alex, stand over here. So you're, they're dribbling the basketball, dribbling the basketball. Go ahead, guys. Dribbling. They're going to go into tags. They Alex tags Austin. Austin's now going to sit down. I come along and I tag Alex. He sits down. Austin gets back up in the game. Pretty simple. Now, one item that comes up is what we call mutual, is when two people tag each other at the same time. When that happens, you can do a rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins that stays alive. The other person sits down. Freeze! This time we're going to shrink the space only inside the main volleyball court. So it's inside the blue line with the dark hardwood. This game really doesn't come to an end. It's usually continual. It can come to an end if one person is left remaining. The teacher usually can yell jailbreak whenever they choose, trying to keep as many people back in the game working on their dribbling skills. Resurrection! Keep that head up, keep moving, keep moving. The next game we're gonna explain is tap seven. In order to play this game, you just need to have two students or more. You will need basketballs, one for every player, and nets to shoot on. Uh, so at your basket, there'll be two shooters shooting. The game is called tap seven because they're going up to seven points. If we said tap five, the game would go to five. Tap nine, the game would go to nine. But for today, we're gonna to say tap seven. We got two shooters, each has a basketball. When the game starts, independently, they do it together. So they all have their basketballs, they tap them together. When that happens, that gives them free reign to shoot. If you shoot your first shot from the foul line, that's where you should start. If it goes in, it's two points. If you miss, you follow your shot to get your rebound. Once you put that rebound in, it's worth one point. But it is a race to see which of the two shooters scores first in order to earn the points. Okay, any questions? So you guys are gonna demonstrate. When you're ready, tap your balls together and do your first shot. Go ahead. Okay, two points are scored there. They reset now. So the score right now is Austin two, Robert zero. All right, Austin's on fire, four nothing, okay. Okay, battle. Austin got the roll, six nothing. Six nothing on this. So remember, the game goes to seven. If you score over seven, that's okay. If he gets this in, he'd win the round. Come on, Robert, come on, Robert. Okay, what's the score, guys? Austin six, Robert two. Okay, so on the missed shot there, both followed their shot, Austin scored. He would win seven to two that round. So now for our game, so the team version of this, say you two stay there. Uh, can you guys stand up? One, two, three, four, stand up right here. So say these guys are on the same basket, they'll be underneath, making a nice line. So just next guy in, so winner would stay, loser would rotate in. Does that make sense? So Cruz, you're in there, Robert will be out. You play top seven to work on your basketball skills while having a whole lot of fun. The 
Next game we're going to show you is called NBA 2-Ball. This game is a basketball shooting game done in partners. It is a great game for grades 5 to 9 and once again it can be modified up to grade 12. The equipment needed are poly spots as well as the music in the background. The two players are a team and their points are scored together. We teach this game to work on the kids' passing skills, shooting skills, and cooperation. The objective of the game is to score as many points as you can with you and your partner. Here's a scoring grid. You get two points from this poly spot, three points from this one, five points, seven points. You take a bonus shot at the beginning of the game. These are the rules though. You cannot shoot twice in a row. You have to alternate shots and you cannot shoot from the same spot twice in a row. For example, if Koji shot from two, Caitlin cannot shoot from two again. She has to shoot from another spot. So you have to keep on switching spots and taking turns shooting. There was music to this game. How it goes, it starts off with, this is Gatorade NBA 2 ball. And you get 10 seconds for your bonus shots. Your bonus shots are worth 10 points. You get one each, and then I'll start counting you down. You get a minute to score as many points as you can. If you're waiting underneath the basket, please count for the people shooting, because then they'll do it for you after. Get ready for the bonus round. Get set. Go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's Gatorade NBA two ball time. Five, four, three, two, one, go! All right, next group, next group's up. If you wanted to, at the end of the minute, you can get all the groups to come up and tell you their score. What we do in our class, we track them all. At the end of the class, we have a sit down and we go through all the scores and ask them what they can improve on next time. All right, next group. <laughs> So the next game we're going to play is basketball bowling. Now this game can be played uh, ideally with 25, uh, close to even 50 students in the gym at a time. It all kind of depends on the number of basketball nets that you have available. Uh, ideally, we like to have students in groups of four to six and one group at each basketball net. But if we have larger groups, then you can put two groups at each basketball net. Uh, we do this activity with uh, students grades five to nine. But again, it could be modified for students as young as kindergarten all the way up to grade 12. Uh, the equipment we need to play this game is one basketball per group, uh, one hula hoop per group, and one poly spot per group. You also need a large pylon in the center of the gym with some type of ball to put on top. We just use a baseball or a softball. We're gonna be uh, split into groups of four to five students, right? So four or five, and each group's basically just gonna be at one of the six baskets. Right? There's going to be a poly spot at each basket or the basket you're assigned to. Right? To start off with, you're just going to line up behind that poly spot. That's where you're going to be shooting from to start off with. Now, uh, for the first one, we're going to say that your team needs to make five shots. Right? Five baskets. That's all you need to do. It doesn't matter if it's five consecutive shots. Right? It just needs to be five in total. Right? It also doesn't matter who scores any of those five. Just five. That's all we need. Once your team's made five shots from that poly spot, then it's time to go bowling, right? So what that means is that the last person to make a basket, whoever hits the fifth shot, you're gonna go stand in the hula hoop underneath the basket and roll or bowl the ball towards the cone in the center, trying to knock off the baseball. 
The first team to roll it, knock off the baseball, is our winner, right? Then we blow it down and we start a new round. A few other important notes. Um, one student cannot shoot all their shots. They need to make sure they're alternating who's shooting each time. It's also easier if the person that, that's shooting goes to get their own rebound and then passes it to the next person in line. Also very important, if a team that's bowling misses the pylon completely, they then need to go run, get their basketball, go back to their assigned poly spot and start all over again. Meaning they need to get five baskets again before they can bowl. Basketball bowling gives the students a great opportunity to focus on their shooting form and shooting technique, but also again they're needing to, to work together and cooperate with their teammates and it does have that element of competition that a lot of the students do really enjoy. Winners, Ray 